Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to explain components in Figma in the simplest and quickest way possible. Components in Figma are essential to understand if you want to take full advantage of Figma and of other prototyping apps that use a similar mechanism. And at the same time it may be a struggle to understand for beginners and on your own. So let's get straight into it. Components are basically templates. They are objects that you can reuse across your design. They are great for something that needs to stay the same across your design. For creating and using components, let's use something familiar from the real world. Here we have two photos. We have an apple and we have an orange. Both of these are fruits. So let's select both of them and go to this drop down menu on the top and create a component set. We have created a component called component one. We can now use an instance of this component by going to assets and using component one on our page like this. So this is an instance. Whenever we make a change to our component, to our main component right here, this change is going to be reflected across our instances and we can have one or multiple instances. If I now add for example a circle on top of this apple within this component you can see how this circle is now visible on all of these instances. So this is a component, this is an instance. Fairly simple, right? But the name component one is not really descriptive. Let's change that to fruit. We have a component called fruit and as you can see there are two objects within this fruit component. These objects are called variants. It makes logical sense that you have a component called fruit and then variants apple and orange. So now I have three instances of the fruit component where I can also use the second variant which is the orange, right? Using this drop down menu. So let's recap. A component is basically the main object and these instances are copies of this main object. That's why this is basically a template, right? You should now understand the logic behind a component and variance. As you can see, we can get multiple instances and each of these can be a different variant. Of course, if we modify this variant, it's going to be updated everywhere where we use this specific variant of this component. So remember words component, variance and instances right here. Let me remove the circle from the orange. Let's quickly take a look at what we have here. We have property one image four and that's an instance of the fruit component but property one nor image four isn't really a sufficient and descriptive wording of what is happening. So let me select the component, go to properties, edit this property and change this property to type of fruit. At the same time let me select image 4 and change that to orange and image 5 and change that to apple. So if I click on the instance of this component you can see that we have an instance of the fruit component with a property called type of fruit set to orange. I can change the type of fruit property to apple and back to orange. So at this point you should understand what component properties and component property values are. Orange and apple are property values and type of fruit is a property. So if I select the component you can see that under properties I get type of fruit with orange and apple being the values right? So that's a variant property. So as I said you can now reuse these elements across your design and whenever you make a change to the main component this change is going to be reflected across all of your instances which are here on the right side. Now let's take this one step further and talk about nested components. Here we have two leaves. One is fresh and one is quite old. I'm going to select both of these and go to the top bar and select create component set. I have now a component one which I'm going to rename to leaf. Right? Then under properties I'm gonna edit property one to be called freshness and we're gonna have two values. We're gonna have a fresh leaf and we're gonna have an old leaf. Okay now when I use an instance of the leaf component I can select from a freshness property of fresh and old and it's going to be updated accordingly. However I can also take this leaf, press command X and paste that directly into the fruit component 
And as you can see, I have now updated all the instances of the fruit component, specifically the apple variant. I can now select this leaf and position it right here so that it mimics how you oftentimes see an apple with leaf in the real world. I'm now going to copy this and paste that into the orange variant as well. So the fruit component now has this old leaf everywhere, but I can change this leaf to new, right? I'm going to just select these two and change the freshness to fresh. It's now fresh everywhere. Now imagine you'd want to have an easy way to control what leaf is going to appear on your instance of this component. And you also want to select whether it's going to be fresh or old. So to do that, we're going to have to create something called component properties. And to do that, I am going to select both of these leaves and then under layer, I'm going to go over here and create a Boolean property that will be called show leaf with values of true. Now, when I go to the instance of this fruit component, I can now turn the leaf off and on on each of these individual instances, right? Simple enough. I can also do one more thing. I can also go to properties on the fruit component and go to expose properties from nested instances. And by the way, if you don't see this option, make sure to enable beta features in Figma settings. So I now click on expose properties from nested instances and I'm going to check the leaf component. And at this moment, when I select the fruit instance, I can also select the leaf freshness. It can be fresh or old, right? On each of these individual instances. So not only can I now choose if I want to have the leaf visible, I can also control whether this leaf is going to be fresh or old. And because the leaf is a component within a component, right? So in this component, we have an instance of another component. Whenever I make a change in the leaf component, for example, I add a circle, you can see that whenever I use the fresh leaf, we get also a circle that we have defined right here. Similarly to the old leaf. As you can see, everything has now circles. I can now go ahead and use all of these fruits everywhere across my page. And because I have created this logic with nested components, with component properties, with variants, and I named everything correctly, it is very easy to navigate and set up specifically as I need. I can also make changes very easily if I make up my mind. So hopefully you now understand what components, instances, variants, component properties, and nested components are. And you also understand how powerful this tool is for creating things in Figma and other prototyping software. Because imagine that, for example, this is going to be a button. Instead of an apple, you're gonna have a button. And instead of an orange, you're gonna have a darker button. Right? If you're going to design a website that's going to have 60 pages and you're going to have 20 buttons on each of these pages and then you want to update the button, the design of this button, there is just one way to do this and not lose your mind and that's components and instances, right? You're going to use the button as instances of a main button component. Let me just show you. If I duplicate these fruits like dozens of times, I have, I don't know how many pieces of fruit all over the page. If I now want to change how the leaf looks, normally I'd have to change every single leaf on every single one of these fruits. But thanks to components and instances, I'm able to do that easily in an instance from one place. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and also make sure to leave a like if this video helped you understand components in Figma. And let me know if you'd like to see another video on components where I go more in depth with specific examples. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.